Welcome back to the table. I'm here again with Nelson, and you might know what that means. It means it's time to talk about Marvel Champions. Yeah, it is. Let's go. I got my Marvel hat on and everything. We're uh, both big Marvel Champions fans, and today we want to talk about our top 10 villains or scenario packs that you can fight against in Marvel Champions. Now, there were several scenarios that came in the base box, but they released more and more with every box that's come out. They released a ton of standalone scenarios. We have you over can play. 40 now. 40, yeah, there, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of boiled it down to our uh, top 10. We each brought five today um, that we're going to talk about. So why don't we just jump in and talk about your number five. My number five, I'm excited to talk about because you have not played this one that's yet. That's true. The newest You're box I haven't play played. It. Yeah, and this is Magog. And this oh, is from yeah. the Mojo Mania scenario pack. So this is kind of a mini campaign. It comes with three different scenarios in it. The first one, you get to fight off and face off against Magog. You get transported, and it's like this kind of, I, I picture it as like a coliseum. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah everyone's the comics, cheering. It's like a big like multiverse thing. Yeah. yeah, and what's unique about this scenario is you're not trying to kill Magog. That's not the end game scenario for this. What you're doing is if you knock Magog out, he has a little bit lower hit points, you get rating counters, and if he hits you, he gets rating counters. The first one to 10 rating counters per player wins, and there's different ways that you can get and uh, not lose, but have the opponents get raid encounters. And it's just like a really unique so scenario. Cool. And it feels so epic. I feel like I am like, you know, when you flip you're that over TV, to the cheering basically. crowd yeah. and you're like, yeah. yeah. And then the surprise contender comes out and there's like this giant minion that is just horrible so, to take care of. It's so much fun. so thematic too. Yeah. For like Mojo TV, like he brings yep. in these people, makes them fight each other. Yeah. And Magog is like such a deep cut for Marvel yeah. comics as well. Yeah. And he he is he's tough, but he's fair, and that's my number five. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited one. for you to play him, and I want to talk to you about him <laughs> after you play him. Yeah, I, uh, you'll be my first call. Yeah. Uh, my number five is the uh, Brotherhood of Badoon. Oof. This puts you up against Drang. Uh, and this is one of the sets in the Galaxy's Most Wanted box. The reason that I picked this, that, that this was so much fun for me, uh, was this was the first one that introduced Ship Command, yeah. which gives you control of the Milano, yeah. which is the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. And you're actually going against the Brotherhood of Badoon ship as well. And so Drang interacts with the ship. He puts counters on the ship, and the ship will bombard your characters. But you have the Milano, which you can use as well. And that whole Ship Command scenario pack that gets put into mm -hmm. Brotherhood of Badoon that kind of simulates the fact that you're out in space, flying around, fighting these guys... It's a really cool, interesting twist for that scenario. Yeah. And thematically, it's also a lot of fun. Yeah. It may, yeah, it's, it's really interesting because it makes you feel like you're fighting both the land and that right. space battle, which is kind of fun. And you know you're going to get hit with that bombardment every, like, I don't know, maybe... Every couple turns. Every couple of turns. It's coming. And it's going to it's gonna hit you with damage, and that's pretty scary. Well, yeah. But the Milano, what I really like about the Milano is how flexible it is. You can use it as a resource. Yep. You can use it to thwart down. Yeah. There's some things that it's like... Exhaust Milano or the first player has to discard cards and you're like, I'm not the first player. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the thing, is like the Milano pat you you pass control of the Milano, yeah. whoever's first player gets to control it. Yeah. And you do make that decision because if you use it to for the for the free resource, you're not you're not getting the thwart bonus. And yeah, yep. some of those encounter cards, yeah, you, you gotta yeah, kind of you gotta hope. Mean. Yep. It can be really mean. So yeah, that is the Brotherhood of Badoon. Alrighty, my number four kind of piggybacks off the idea that was introduced with Ship Command. And we're going to talk about one of the oh. newest scenarios in the game, Juggernaut. Yes. We actually live streamed Juggernaut on this channel uh, a little bit ago. But Juggernaut has the Hope Summers encounter set, which is similar to the Milano, where it's an ally oh, this right. time. But she kind of takes on the attack and thwart values of your hero. She also passes it around. And so you can lean into this, and I think that's really fun. Where it's like, I've played with Miss Marvel, who has one attack and one thwart, and Hope doesn't really do anything. But I've also played with Wolverine, when he has like nine attacks, oh, and like oh. Hope's going crazy. But that's not why I like this scenario so much. I like Juggernaut because he is a... I, now a that puncher? I'm he's a puncher. And now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of these have like alternate win conditions. Maybe I just don't like the normal way the <laughs> win in Marvel Champions. Um, but he also likes to do interesting things in Marvel Champions. You've, well, okay, also, when you've played as much Marvel Champions as you've played, <laughs> yeah. I think you start to gravitate towards yeah. ones that kind of twist the formula. That, that's true. That's true. But Juggernaut's going to hit you in the face. Juggernaut has overkill, which means that you cannot block with your allies. Yeah. Well, I guess you can. You're still going to take damage. They're either protecting like one of that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then his main scheme. Usually, whenever you reach that threshold on the main scheme in Marvel Champions, you lose. This time, 
doesn't matter. He just hits you again. And so, like, you, you, just, you, you, he gets hit hard. But it, it, it forces the heroes to play a little differently. It flexes and stresses some of the different um, strengths that heroes maybe aren't typically showing off. Like, Hulk sure. is really good because he's a lot of health in this scenario. But Hulk also can struggle in a lot of the other scenarios. And so, it's a way that sheds some light on some of these other heroes that I think just makes it a really fun and a really fun encounter to build for. Yeah, you don't have to really thwart Juggernaut. I mean, you, yeah, it helps to prevent the hit, but yeah. if you're strong enough to take the hits, yep. then yep. you can let him come. Yep. Also, like, Juggernaut putting his armor out there, like, getting yeah. his helmet and everything yep. is pretty cool, too. Yeah. All right, so number uh, four for me is The Hood. And this is one of the modular packs that came out. Uh, the Hood is cool for a lot of different reasons. For one, uh, he introduced a ton of new modular sets into the game. And he uses a bunch of random modular sets. So you're actually pulling in like like a stack of random sets and then they will be shuffled into the encounter deck as you play, which is yeah. really interesting because that makes the hood just feel absolutely different every time you play him. Yeah. Plus the hood is a cool character and he's got his cape and he's got his guns. Uh, and he's got this foul play ability on his character sheet where he can start getting his equipment. But unlike a lot of the villains you play, the trigger for foul play for his ability is on a ton of his cards. Yeah. So as you reveal, like Madame Mask is one of his minions. When you reveal her, she triggers his foul play. There's some side schemes that trigger his foul play. Um, so you're triggering that. You don't know when that ability is going to happen, yep. but it, it's a, it's it's cool. Yeah. It feels very cool. Yeah. And and it's like we were saying, so modular because yeah. you can choose all the hard modular sets of Marvel Champions and shuffle it in, or you can choose some of the easier ones if you want a more laid back game. If you are testing a deck that just wants to kill minions, throw all the minions into his deck. And you can, right. it, it is just so customizable to what you want to be doing in Marvel Champions, and it's a fantastic Or you thing. could just choose them randomly. Or you could just choose them randomly. I, mean, I have seen could, people do you that. You could get up with some... Yeah. I've done it, and I've ended up with some very rough <laughs> combinations. Oh, I'm sure. Especially for when you play solo. But yeah, uh, the Hood also, uh, and this isn't so much the villain himself, but we're noting that that pack introduced the standard two and expert two yeah. card. So it lets you kind of change up your game a little more. So there is just a ton of modularity. So that is, I think, all around one of the best villain packs, I think, yeah. as far as like what you get it's, it's for the game. It's very good value. Very, yeah, very exactly. good value for the game. Moving on to my number three, yeah. we're going to be talking about Red Skull. Red Skull is the capstone, that fifth villain that you're going to fight in the Rise of Red Skull campaign box. Yeah. He is all about side schemes. <laughs> That's so a way to, that's one way to put it. Yeah, that's one way, right? You pull out all the side schemes from that encounter deck and you make its own side scheme deck. Now, at the beginning of every single villain phase, he's going to put a side scheme into play. You're going to have to bring thwarting to the table, but he also gets more powerful based on how many side schemes are in play. So you have uh -huh. to take him out. And what I like is you can add in side schemes that are more difficult, but a lot of Red Skull side schemes actually give you benefits when you thwart them down. Well, so yeah, that's that balance. That's that balance. And so maybe now you go get to find an ally when you take down the captive side scheme. And there's a lot of ways to do that. But what I really like, and kind of Red Skull has been elevated more recently too with the player side schemes that have come out in Next Evolution, where you can put a player, you can put a yeah. side scheme into play say, and you get I a benefit. Tried that. But also Red Skull gets stronger. <laughs> and so it's a it's a push pull. But Red Skull going all the way back to that first big box expansion for the yeah, game. Yeah, that was a great box. It was too. a fantastic. A lot box. of great villains in that box. Yeah. Red Skull the table hog. I I've got no point. There's like six side schemes in play yep, yep. with with Red Skull. It's, I, yeah, you look at that. You're like, I like that challenge. Yeah. I just like seeing that table full. Yep. Uh, it's like an, it's like Ronin, but without all the. Craziness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like Red Skull. He, he can he can be very difficult, but he's also one that if you can kind of build your deck for, he can be really satisfying to take down. All right. My number three is Venom, and this is from the Sinister Motives box. <laughs> uh, one of the early, I think one of the early uh, villains you fight yeah. in that box, but this brought me right back to being a kid, reading the comics, watching that old Spider-Man yeah. animated series show, because... Playing Venom, if you know, Venom is a symbiote. He came from space. He kind of can take over people, but his weakness is sound. Mm -hmm. And it's very thematic and very cool. There's a bell tower that you can ring. And that's you have to like contribute actions to that um, in order to ring it. And then Venom becomes weaker. Uh, and the bell can flip back and forth from two different sides. And while it's active, yeah, you, Venom is, is at a disadvantage. That is very cool and very thematic. Uh, it just and it's fun. Like Venom is a fun villain to, to play, but that whole idea of just flipping, having to flip that mm -hmm. back and forth throughout the whole game, and like manage that because Venom will make it flip back over. 
It's very interesting. Yeah, there's a whole nother thing that you're doing. And the right. way that you're interacting with that is whenever you would deal damage or attack Venom, you can instead assign that to the bell. So it's like, you have to I'm decide, swinging right. while kicking uh -huh. the bell and making it ring now. And so that's going to distract Venom. And then while Venom's distracted, if I'm going at him, one of my favorite things about Venom is his other kind of mechanic where whenever you attack Venom, he gets oh, boost cards. Uh -huh. And so he's going to be stacking up these boost cards every single time a villain activates a Marvel Champions he gets a card drawn yeah, he could have a... extra scheme or attack or even better. <sighs> he's effects. a heavy hitter but I've played Venom where he's like eight boost cards I'm like oh no oh. <laughs> like if we don't kill him this turn yeah I think we lose and it's that always be instant that death. yeah it's always the face down kind of random chance like I hope he doesn't get overkill on this one <laughs> and just like but uh, it's a good scene. Yeah, if he gets overkill, you're dead. But also, <laughs> it's cool that when you beat Venom, he joins you. Yeah. Uh, for the, spoiler alert, for the campaign. For the you campaign, can actually yeah. get that Venom suit, symbiote suit card. Yep. It's broken. Yeah. It's, it's so it's, broken. It's, but it's, really it's a fun. really, really, really cool set. So that's Venom for me. That's your number three. And number two, I have... We're throwing it all the way back to the core box for this one. My number two uh, yeah. is Ultron. I'm surprised that it's so high for it you. It is such a good scenario. It's the third scenario ever put out for Marvel yeah. Champions. It's in the core box. If you're buying the core box, you're going to get this scenario. Number two of all time. It is so thematic. So Ultron, It is definitely thematic. Yeah, because Ultron is going to be controlling drones, right? That's what Ultron does. But what he, the way that they emulate that in the game mechanics is that you will take the top card of your deck and place it face down as a, like a really weak minion for you. But one, you don't get that card. You're going to have to wait for that card to come back. So right. it's like, oh, I really need that Quinn carrier. It's gone, right? You have, yeah. you have to wait for it to come well, back. Well, you can take Captain America's shield away from him. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, that yeah, that's <laughs> bring the bring the bring the happiness down. No, but it, but that is a really cool. I don't, we haven't even still seen anything like that. Yeah, where it's taking cards and like putting them out in play like that. Yeah, and you can stack up a ton of drones, and like they only hit you for one, but when you have five of them, that gets really dangerous right. really quickly. Well, and Ultron, as you play on the harder difficulties too, Ultron gets environments that are put into play that makes the minions stronger. So those yep. drones become a, <laughs> really they, they can hit for a lot if you don't yep. manage with that. Yep. And then that penultimate Ultron, he does he cannot take damage when drones are uh -huh. in play. And so like you can't just ignore them. You have to take them out. And you have to build uh decks to try and you make sure that you can do. take all those decks. And now we have a lot of cards that reward you for killing minions. And so if I really just want to have some fun, I take like Rocket. Like Hall of Heroes. Hall of Heroes. Yeah. Take Rocket who gets to deal two damage to everything. Or Dust. Dust, can Dust gets to everything do it. at once. Uh, it's it is a really Excellent scenario to deck build specifically for. Ultron was my favorite scenario out of the core box. Yeah. Core box, and I still go back because it is a harder scenario. Yeah, it's not. So easy. I still test a lot of decks against Ultron oh, to yeah. see if they can yeah. beat him. Yeah. And if you're not like an aggression, if you're not a minion heavy aggression deck, it's really hard. It's tough. It's, it's tough. Really hard to do that. What's your number two? Uh, my number two is Kang. Kang the Conqueror. This was a super cool scenario pack. Again, a lot of content in this pack. The Hood and the and Kang both came se came separately. Uh, but Kang is super, super thematic. Um, if you've been watching the MCU, you know Kang is the big villain right now, so it's kind of cool to have this pack. But as you're fighting Kang, he actually sends all of the different heroes to different points in time. And you have to fight different versions of Kang yeah. that were specific to that time period. And I think there's like four different versions. There's like everything from like ancient Egypt to super far in the future. Yeah. Uh, and you're separated. So all the decks, like when you're playing with four players, you're used to kind of really working together. Then all of a sudden King <laughs> teleports you through time and you're all separate. And then the first person to beat their villain just kind of starts jumping back until eventually you're one group again to fight that last uh, level of Kang. Uh, and you can fight through all three phases. It's super cool. Yeah. I think Kang to me is the most cinematic sure uh villain in marvel champions because it really feels like i'm going through like the beginning stage and then he's like oh the twist he sends you all to different yeah, you have uh, to like figure it out because sometimes you can get matched up where my deck is not ready to handle this second stage so i'm really hoping that someone else can beat their version of kang right come just help survive me, long enough survive for the help to enough. come yeah because if i don't then he's going to get even stronger in that third phase for the final showdown and it feels like I'm watching a movie unfold on the right. table. Well, and the fact that it's random, too. And so if you're playing <laughs> with just two players, you don't know which time period you're going to get sent to. And then also, the faster you can beat those, you can kind of get a little bit of an advantage against Kang uh, in the final act yeah. of, that, of that fight. And this is uh, 
this is a big one. Like, Kang has three sets, three yeah. versions of Kang that you have to fight through. So it definitely feels cinematic. It also feels, yeah, it's, it's a longer one, and it feels more like, almost like a big box experience yeah. in one small pack, for yeah. sure. No, excellent second yeah, pick. thank you. My number one is Hela. So Hela came to us in the yeah. Mad Titan Shadow box. She's number four in that box. And I love Lord of the Rings. I love Marvel Champions. This is the scenario to me that feels like those two games got combined. Lord sure. of the Rings is all about going on quest and like doing these side projects. And Hela is like that because when you face off against Hela, she's a, also apparently I like a mortal. Uh, oh yeah, she <laughs> can't be defeated yeah, right away. She yeah. can't be defeated right away because what you need to do is you need to progress through the different levels of hell in order to rescue Odin, who's been captured by Hela. Which is really, that's so cool. It's so cool. And once you defeat one level, you move on to the next, which has better side schemes and bigger minions. And then you go through that three times, then you can rescue Odin and you can knock Hela out, kind of set her back a little bit along mm -hmm. the way, but she will come back unless you have Odin. And once you have Odin, he gets to go and you face off against Hela, but she's also a lot stronger because she powers up based on how many levels you've gone that through. That's super cool. And you can get Odin's armor too. You can right? get Odin. Like, yeah. If you want to be an overachiever, <laughs> you can get Odin and his armor and then he just is awesome. Once yeah. he's got his armor on, yeah. that's such a cool moment. You re he really feels like King Odin. Like he is contributing sp very significantly well, right, to the game. Right, you're yeah. struggling through that whole fight. Like that's, that is such a tough scenario too. Yeah. Every level that gets, it's it's so hard and you're struggling and then Odin pops up and you're like, now, yeah, yep. Odin's here. Like dad's, yep. dad's home. <laughs> Dad, yeah, dad's home. Let's go. <laughs> uh -huh. um, it's really cool. Yeah, it, it just, it, it feels like an experience. It feels like I'm actually like going on an adventure. Yeah. And I think all the minions and the side schemes really help tell that. That's why it's my number A one. lot like Kang, that does feel very yeah, cinematic does. too. Yeah, like you, it does. And I need to play, I really should play Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, Because I like should. that, I, I like that quest. It's, yeah. a, it's really cool. And that brings me to my number one. And uh, I think this was one that Nelson, I stole this off Nelson's list. <laughs> but this is my number one scenario. This is Project Wide Awake. Yeah. Uh, from, from the new, uh, it was a Mutant Genesis. Mutant Genesis, what it's called? yeah. Uh, I like this scenario for a lot of reasons. First of all, just a little side note, my love of Marvel that has grown my whole life all started with the X-Men animated series. Oh, okay, yeah. That was what I yeah. watched that introduced me to the X-Men. And the first episode, Night of the Sentinels, is when they're chasing Jubilee through the mall and it's where Gambit's there and Storm and all these X-Men characters show up. And that is what this scenario is. Yeah. You're literally rescuing Jubilee from the mall as the Sentinels <laughs> are coming and kidnapping everybody. Yep. Um, and that, like, playing that scenario, I feel like a kid again watching that episode. And, like, all it just feels so cool. And, again, this is another cinematic one. It's another one that's very thematic. Like, these Sentinels are just coming out of the sky at the mall. And once you kind of beat that side scheme, you get Jubilee. You rescue yep. her. Uh, she comes onto your side, um, which is pretty cool. It is really cool. Also, side note. It's pretty funny that when you meet Jubilee, she already calls herself Jubilee. <laughs> She's not even an X-Men yet. She's already got her X-Men nickname. Yep, yep. I noticed that in the show, too. It's kind of funny. She, she, she's been planning for <laughs> she's this moment. Right. Uh, but it's, and then once she comes in, she kind of gets controlled by the first player, too. Um, there's a whole lot that goes into that scenario with those Sentinels. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's the Zero Tolerance yep. set that gets uh, into that. You get the Days of Future Path set <laughs> mixed into that if you're playing the campaign. It is a ton of fun and, and my favorite scenario for a lot of reasons yeah. obviously it, it has a really interesting mechanic where it takes a modular set side scheme operation yeah. zero tolerance and gives it permanent you cannot take this out so it's almost like you have two main schemes that's and a what problem that side scheme says is that if an ally is ever defeated by an enemy attack they get placed under the side scheme and then that's another loss condition yeah so it's another way to de-incentivize some of the Probably one of the more stronger strategies in the game, allies. which is just throwing your friends in front of the villain, <laughs> right? right? Um, and so, like, it helps you kind of, you need to kind of focus a little bit differently. How yeah. am I going to approach? I need to save my allies, which is what X-Men are all about, right? Oh, look at that. The friends. It all comes back together. It all comes back together. I mean, I just, I love the X-Men box, the Mutant Genesis box. It's good. In general, we could have probably picked any number of those yeah. sets to be on our list because every time I play, every time I play one of those scenarios, I feel like I'm back watching that old cartoon again. So it's a fantastic. Uh, whoever box, yeah. I think was it Caleb it that was designed Caleb that did that one. Oh, yep. Man, that like it's so, like you could tell he's a fan of X Men yes. with, yeah. with that set. Absolutely, uh, it's very cool. So those are our top ten uh, villains. If you're new to Marvel Champions or you're looking for some direction on on which ones to get, maybe this guide will help you uh, make that decision. Yeah, maybe absolutely. Also right. welcome if you're new. <laughs> Like, it's a great game. Yeah, I'm happy you're here. Check out Nelson's channel, Nelson All Over Cards, where he does a ton 
of Marvel Champions content. I've also done videos with Brant Sanderson yeah. from Step Into the Portal, yeah. uh, Right Brain Roller. Mm -hmm. uh, so he does Marvel Champions content as well. But hopefully we'll be doing more Marvel Champions content here on MVM as well. So stay tuned for that. And until we see you again, make sure everybody has fun playing Marvel Champions. Yeah. That's it. Bye, guys. See ya.